We turn now to a News Nation investigation. Across the country, caps on damages are keeping medical malpractice victims and survivors out of the courtroom. Right now, there are 27 states that limit how much you can sue for malpractice. And tonight, we're focusing on California, where a decades long battle is ending with a new law that raises the state's cap on non economic damages from 250,000 to 350,000. The bill is being hailed a victory by victims' advocates, but for thousands of families impacted under the old cap, it's too little too late. We sat down with one family still seeking justice following the death of a mother and her baby. It's unfair. No family should have to go through this to get justice. Tracy Dominguez and Xavier De Leon have fought tirelessly for justice over the last five years following the death of Tracy's daughter. Xavier's fiance, Demi Dominguez, and the couple's newborn baby boy, Malachi. We were expecting a happy ever after, and we're sitting here in these chairs trying to make a change for other people. It was late 2018 when Demi Dominguez learned she was expecting a son. I was really looking forward to it, just overjoyed, really. When Demi started experiencing strange symptoms at 32 weeks, she went to the hospital. That's the safest place you can be, you know, um, they know what they're doing. Xavier and Tracy say Demi was never officially seen by the doctor on call at the hospital. And there's a desk full of nurses and she's telling the nurses her symptoms. I don't feel good, I'm swollen, um, I had trouble breathing last night. And then the nurse came around and escorted us all into the little triage room. And she goes, oh yeah, your blood pressure's high. Um, we're gonna just monitor you. Released the next day, Demi was told by the nurse to rest and follow up with her OBGYN. And she did just that. But two days later, things took a turn for the worse. Her jaw was clenched and she was shaking. She was having a seizure. An ambulance rushed Demi to the hospital where her son, Malachi, was delivered via emergency C-section. Felt like time stopped. The ER doctor just looks me in my eye and he says, I'm sorry, but your wife has passed. And in that same breath, he said, but your son's still alive. I just remember the room erupting. I was on the floor at the hospital. I... I couldn't. I fell to the ground. I couldn't comprehend. So I remember sitting down, just holding her hand and looking at her and um, just letting her know that, that I was always going to take care of Malachi and that and that I love her. But Xavier and Tracy's nightmare was far from over. From the beginning, he never had a chance. Malachi was in critical condition and needed to be transferred to a children's hospital. There, Xavier made the excruciating decision to take Malachi off life support. God, I think no one in their right mind would want to give up their child. He was going to be a vegetable. I just couldn't, I couldn't do that. So not only did my wife and fiance get past my arms, but so did my son. Five days later, the family finally got answers when the Kern County coroner determined that Demi died of eclampsia, a severe complication of a treatable condition found in pregnant women called preeclampsia. How did this happen? You know, Demi was, you know, we were prepared. She was always taking good care of herself. At what point in all this did you find out about preeclampsia? We believed that she was going to be okay. No one said she could die. No one said preeclampsia. No one mentioned anything like that to us. If she would have lived, a bag of magnesium sulfate would have prevented a seizure for my daughter and my grandson. Tracy and Xavier learned that the doctor on call, who did not speak to Demi during that first hospital visit, had been disciplined by the California Medical Board in 2000 for gross negligence, repeated negligent acts, and incompetence, resulting in the deaths of two babies and subsequently disciplined again in 2020 for the death of a mother. The family blamed the doctor and the hospital and wanted justice for Demi and Malachi. But to add insult to injury, they learned what many in the country may not know. You go out looking for representation, somebody to help you. 
They said it was pretty much going to be a dogfight. One of the lawyers was like, a lot of people don't want to take on this type of case because of the cap. California is one of three states that caps non-economic damages in medical malpractice cases at $250,000. In fact, California's cap has been locked in place since 1975 when the law was first passed. Today, adjusted for inflation, that figure would be worth more than $1.3 million. I believe that California and every state that has a cap that prevents uh, families who are harmed from seeking justice has less safe health care because of it. Carmen Balber is the executive director of Consumer Watchdog. She has spent decades battling insurance agencies and lobbying groups on behalf of patients and their families. System wide, when there are less financial press pressures from litigation to improve practices, then things don't change. Malpractice cases are costly to try and difficult to win. Low caps on damages make it almost impossible for victims to find a lawyer to take their case, making it unlikely that they ever see the inside of a courtroom, much less a dollar of compensation. The cap is still in place in California after so many decades uh, because the medical lobby has opposed any change. There was a similar proposal on the ballot in 2014 and it lost in the face of a $60 million campaign against it. The medical lobby has argued for years that the reason caps are necessary is to prevent insurance premiums from skyrocketing. What we saw when this cap was enacted in California and in states across the country is that the cap has no relationship to medical malpractice insurance premiums. They went up 450 percent after the cap was enacted in California. It was only rate regulation that stabilized malpractice rates in California. But after 47 years, the law is finally set to change. I am. So pleased to bring before you reform to the medical, medical Injury Compensation Reform Act. Despite facing a well-funded campaign from the medical insurance lobby, intense pressure from victims of malpractice and their families won out. A new law has made its way through the legislature that will finally raise the cap. Unfortunately for Tracy and Xavier, the new law comes too late for their case. But they continue to fight on for others in similar circumstances around the country. Demi and Malachi aren't going to come back. We don't want another family to feel this, the frustration that we have felt. If we can make a change for one family. I think we did our job here on earth. And on Monday, California Governor Gavin Newsom passed a law that raised that cap on damages in medical malpractice cases from 250000 to 350000 And in cases of wrongful death, to 500,000. Both new caps are set to go into effect January 1st and will gradually continue to increase over the next decade. Attorney Nick Rowley is one of the major reasons that change occurred. He has been fighting to raise caps in California for years, and I spoke to him recently about his crusade, why he took it on, and where he's headed next. Nick Rowley joining me now. It is, um, it's great to see you. Nick, why was it so important for you to take on this fight? I have story after story after story handling well over a thousand of these cases throughout my career. Then I lost a newborn son to medical negligence. And I thought to myself, wow, this, this, this is a horrific law. This has been in place since 1975. It's been almost 25 years. Then 20 years later, you know, 20 years of practicing as a lawyer, it's still in place, and it hasn't been changed to the tune of $1. It is significant. Nick, you took on the insurance lobby, the health care lobby, to change this law and, and to enact um, the type of change that we're seeing now. What were you up against in this battle? Powerful special interests who have a lot of influence and control over politicians that they put into office. That's, that's what I was up against, and an unlimited an unlimited amount of money. I mean, we're talking about multiple billion dollar insurance companies, billion dollar industries that are willing to put, you know, whatever it takes into a fight to keep these caps in place. You know, Nick, uh, some may wonder, um, you have a lot to gain from this as a personal injury lawyer. What would you say to them? How would you respond to that? It's something I'm doing because it's the right thing to do and I have the ability to do it. And until you've been a victim of medical negligence, 
or had a family member be a victim of medical negligence, you don't understand it. And what happens now to those tens of thousands of people over all of these years who have not been able um, to access the type of justice that they so desperately wanted? Is any of this retroactive or is that another step? No, it's not retroactive. And that's sad. So we've got thousands and thousands of patients and families that aren't going to see the benefits of this change in the law. And there's really nothing that can be done about that. So it's, there's no next step unless the, the courts decide that, they, that there should be a retroactive application because it's not fair to give some people a benefit that others are not getting who are similarly situated. So what's next? Tell us where you take the fight now. So now that we've changed it in California, I've got other states to go to. Colorado, Montana, those are the two states where I'm going next. We'll go to whatever other states there are that have caps, and there are a number of them. Nick, thank you. It was great to talk to you, and I really appreciate you sharing, um, sharing with us about your experience. I know that's not, not easy. It's never easy, but it's not something that we can ever forget. Thank you. Thank you. Turning his pain into passion. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we continue our investigation into medical malpractice laws across the country, not just in California, but elsewhere. And if you would like to learn more about this important topic, you can check out our continuing coverage at NewsNationNow.com. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.